G'day, and welcome to Avention. We often get lots of questions regarding what we look for in an off-the-track thoroughbred prospect. So today, we're gonna to share with you what we look for when looking for an OTTB prospect for eventing. So if you've decided you're looking for an off-the-track thoroughbred prospect, you've probably been looking at ads and pictures. We're all looking for something kind of different. Some people are looking for a smaller horse, others a bigger horse, mare, gelding, specific colour. But let's just assume that you've found something you like the look of and you're looking to explore further. Now I'm going to go through a list of five things that we look for in order of importance. The first one is the horse's brain or temperament. Now, I don't care how talented the horse is, if he's a nutcase, all he's gonna do is disappoint me in the future. So brain is definitely the most important thing for me. And with this, I'd like to meet the horse in person. If you only get a chance to even go in the store with it, you should be at least able to get a feel for the horse's nature. I'm looking for a horse that's happy with people, is not too overreactive, uh, is sensible about personal space. And if I do get a chance to ride the horse, that when I'm, even if he's green under saddle, that he's got a pretty good way of going and he seems eager and polite. The second thing we look for in a horse is athletic ability. Event horses need to be very athletic to do their job well. So you want to look for three good gates, a good walk, trot and canter. Can they gallop well? Are they light on their feet, easy on themselves and quite agile? Yeah, a good way of testing this is actually seeing the horses go free. So whether it's in a round pen, an arena or even a small paddock, just to sort of see them as they trot, can around, change direction, that's one of the best ways of kind of getting a feel for a horse's athletic ability. Now remember here, the horse doesn't have to be a freak. It doesn't have to be an insanely good move or a good jumper. Uh, we're looking for something that's consistent, that can do all of the above. Um, it might be a good idea to take a look and see if you can uh, locate the horse's racing videos. Sometimes you can see the horses gallop when they're actually racing and that can give you a good feel too. All right, on to number three. Number three is soundness. And by this, I'm talking about any injury history that the horse has and something that comes up in a vet examination. Now, normally, Jimmy and I don't do a completely thorough vet examination, oftentimes because the horse is going to be quite cheap. But there are a few things we definitely do, and that is flexions and normally some basic x-rays like in the ankles and in the hocks. Now, before you go any further with this, it's naive to think that a lot of these horses are gonna come off completely injury free. Racing is about them winning and essentially making money. So if they are no longer winning, a lot of times it's because they have some kind of injury or downtime. So many of these horses are gonna come off the track with a lot of common injuries like fractured sesamoid, uh, shin splints or shin soreness, foot soreness, muscle soreness, a lot of common things that come in, in off the track thoroughbreds. So a lot of these things aren't going to affect your horse in the long run. What's important here is that you use a vet that you trust and knows your priorities, what you're looking for and the kind of job this horse is going to have. And they're gonna be the best ones to give you an honest evaluation as to whether or not you should keep looking or if it's the one for you. All right, let's head to a Shramo shout out. Today's Shramo shout out goes to the Retired Racehorse Project located in Davidsonville, Maryland. Their mission is to facilitate the placement of retired thoroughbreds into second careers by educating the public on the distinctive characteristics, versatility of use and appropriate care and training of the iconic American thoroughbred. Check them out here, they do a great job. Back to the action. Welcome back guys. Number four is confirmation. So here we've got an example of a nice thoroughbred here. He would be what we would call back in Australia more of a distance kind of horse. We're looking at where his neck come out of his shoulder. If it's kind of set down low, you might have problems with them on the flat. Mozart's got a pretty nice neck. It's a little bit, it's a little long, but it looks good. Then we're looking at the shoulder. So having a nice slopey shoulder is going to encourage the horse to be able to lift his legs up and make a good jump. Looking at their back, we don't want them to be too, too long in the back, but that's just a preference. I like horses that are a little more short coupled because they're a bit easier to get together. Then looking down at their rump here, we're looking to make a nice triangle shape like that, not too pointy. 
Is the horse's hock set out behind him or is it easy to come underneath him? Just little things like that. Now remember too, we're going to find things that aren't going to be perfect. Just the same way as there's things that aren't perfect about each of us as people. But we're just trying to make a little bit of an evaluation. Some other things we're looking for too with their legs is making sure that we don't have one that's wonky. Uh, you can do that by looking at them front on and get a feel for where does the, where does the uh, pastern leave the fetlock. Is it look like it's all going out on an angle? Are they kind of knock kneed? Do they have duck feet? Things like that. Another common thing is with, with thoroughbreds in their feet is that we can often see the one front foot that looks like a pancake and the other one that's a bit clubby. Now, it's pretty common and a lot of times with a good set of shoes and a good farrier, it's not gonna cause much of a problem. But definitely, if it does look like a little bit of a worry, ask your vet to see if they've got any concerns. Let's take a look at Kaz, who's a very different kind of off-the-track thoroughbred. All right, guys, so now I've got Kaz here, who's my latest off-the-track thoroughbred prospect. As you can see, a very different looking thoroughbred to Mozart. Much smaller, and he's more of a sprinter kind of type. Uh, if I looked at his confirmation, there are a couple things that are not perfect for me. Like, I'd like his neck to be a little bit more high set and maybe uh, not quite so bum high in the back. If you look from his withers to his bum, he's a little bum high, but certainly nothing that's going to turn me off the horse. If anything, the horse has a fantastic personality and there's nothing that concerns me for the future. If I look at his legs, his cannon bones aren't too long. He's not on these tiny, skinny little pastons. He's got good feet. Um, I've got to remember too that the confirmation is just a tool. You could have a perfectly conformed horse that was going to be a complete dud. Or you could have a horse that looks like a camel that can jump the moon. So it's just a tool to help with maybe future issues. And if you add it in with all the other attributes we're looking for, you should be able to figure out whether a confirmation fault is a red flag or if it's something that you can learn to live with. Last of the five is experience and age versus the price. And you might be looking at thoroughbreds in a variety of different situations. Maybe you're looking at this thoroughbred directly off the track, or maybe someone has already bought this thoroughbred from the track and has put a month under saddle, exposed him to a few things, and he's got a little bit of training under his belt. And this really just depends on the circumstances here, but I'm looking to add in the different factors. Is the horse a four, five, or sometimes even a six-year-old? How much has it done? Has it ever seen a fence before, or is it completely new? And also, too, is that reflected in the price? I'll give you an example. If there's a horse that's a five-year-old, has been a month off the track, but somebody has already been riding it, got it sound and ready to go, it's maybe even seen a couple of small fences, then it might not be that unrealistic for them to expect six, seven thousand dollars for the horse, especially if it's nice. However, if I'm looking at a four-year-old directly off the track is essentially still a racehorse, then I'm probably not looking to spend more than two or three thousand dollars. It just really depends on the situation. If you've gone through the first four parts of our list, then you'll probably have a pretty good idea of what's a fair price and what isn't. Hopefully by sharing our list of five things to look for in an off-the-track thoroughbred prospect, you've got some ideas of what you're going to be looking for. Now, a couple of last-minute tips. Tip number one, the golden rule of buying off-the-track thoroughbreds is just because you can afford it doesn't mean you should buy it. There are countless people that go out and buy horses that are completely unsuitable for them just because they can afford it. If you're interested in a thoroughbred, it's probably a good idea to take a look at his race record. There are numerous different websites which offer this. If you look at his history of races, you can see how many races he ran, and if there were any major gaps in his career, which might indicate an injury. It's not always possible, but if you can, have a conversation with the trainer. You just might gain some valuable information about the horse's behavior and history. My last tip is don't let a recoverable injury or nasty habit scare you off what otherwise is a very good horse. A lot of racehorses have habits like cribbing or weaving, or they may have had some kind of injury, most of which will not affect the horse in a second career at all. So the best thing you can do here is have a really good evaluation from a vet you trust to make the best possible decision. All right, guys, that wraps up another episode. Hopefully by sharing what we look for in horses, you've got some ideas. Best of luck horse hunting. See you next week. O-T-T-B's for life. Boom.
from us sharing what? I don't wanna wanna. Oh, T, T, T. T. <laughs> O, B, B, T. O, T, T. T. We're doing it together. <laughs> uh, you practice.